Welcome everybody to the show, my name is Dabu and it's the Game of Champions League. It's Ancients against Efrag, the Bulgarian squad against the Swedes. The Swedes just recently won the LAN tournament of the Pantamera Challenge at Stockholm in the Inferno Online uh, LAN Center. And that gave them a really good boost already, being uh, quite a young, young squad. Um, but with Pronex at the helm, they have all the brains they need to come through and maybe even win against Efrag. The even, the word is probably misplaced here because I think it's a 50 50 matchup. We will find out though. The map is Inferno, it's a best of one, and the loser will face the loser of SK and Method, who will play at 19 CET. I welcome every single one of you. And uh, just a personal message, it's my birthday tomorrow, so uh, let's see how long today's games will take. Maybe we can celebrate it together. So let's switch to the game, the players are already there. We have 10 players on the server, but we are just waiting for the go of the admin. And you can see yourself, Spy Leader, already punched in the ready command. It's gonna be a few seconds or minutes until we start this game. Efrag are always a squad that you have to look out for. They recently won against Envious 22 to 19 at IEM Katowice. But the rest of the games at IEM weren't too successful for the Bulgarian squad. They lost against Virtus Pro, they lost against Astralis and against Temple Storm. So ultimately they only got one out of their Four games at the LAN successfully converted in their own favor. But I would never count them out. If they are on point and, you know, this game being online, you're at home, you're feeling comf comfortable, you're also feeling more confident probably, and you never know what those teams can come up with, just like, for example, Space Soldiers with Xantaris in there. They have really strong individuals, and if Victor and Dreamer show up and uh, have the teammates ready as well, it's gonna be a really, really close game. On the Swedish side, we have Pronix, Twist, Schneider, Poff, and Lecro. Schneider being tagged, at, tagged up as Snyder, uh, the sort of, uh, I don't know, Dutch way of spelling it, so to speak. Um, yeah, but. He is Schneider, so RDL, you might not know his name yet, but he's standing in for Lecro now. No, not for Lecro, for Twist actually. Um, but RDL has been hanging around the Swedish scene for a long, long, long time. And if you have watched CSGO in 2013, when he didn't have skins yet, you might still know his name. Obviously. Twist is one of the stronger guys in the lineup of Ancients, so... Oh no, Ariel is only the the coach, it seems like. Yeah, Twist didn't show up, that's why. Yeah, press tab, man. Yeah, so Twist is playing after all and Ariel is just coaching. But still, Ariel would be a viable, viable stand-in. Maybe not for Twist because he's just insanely strong. But um, overall... RDL has the right skill set to stand in. But they don't need him. Spy Leader and company win the knife round, and that's a big thing now for Efrag, because they can start on the CT side. You all know that Inferno is a notoriously CT sided map, with the choke points over here and also in middle. If the CTs get themselves some economy working, they can delay the terrorist pushes for ages. 
and they will be ancient by the time they get their push through. But let's see how the pistol round will pan out because that will give either team a good start. If Ancient lose the pistol round, they kind of give away a chance of getting themselves three early rounds. And with three rounds on the board already, the Terrorists have some more space. They have some more room for error. They can try a few more different strategies that they might not try if they wouldn't have won the pistol round. Pronix is obviously one of the most intelligent and successful in-game leaders of the game. And I'm... And I'm just reading the chat at the moment. Ah, uh, okay. Porvis saying the models are incoming, so maybe... <laughs> I thought there would be some hot girls coming up. No. The weapon models are screwed. So we have a small reconnect here. Wow, what a start to the game! It's really anticlimactic here. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, where was I? I think I was talking about Pronex and his prowess as an in-game leader. I am really positive about his ability to counter E-Frag. He might not have countered them yet in his career because when he was playing with Fnatic or for Fnatic, he was still countering the bigger names and he never really had to face off against E-Frag. Or if he faced off against them, it wasn't in meaningful matches. So maybe he doesn't have anything ready yet, but he can make it up on the way and on the flow. Let's see where this goes. The terrorists will start off with some banana control and already spot spy leader there. Schneider just uh, going all out and there goes the headshot. Already the first frag for the CTs, uh, for the terrorists obviously. And Lekro is down to 8 HP on the terrorist side. The CTs need to watch out though. Schneider is already at the tree and he dunks another one. Bubble goes down and Schneider is on a roll. Trip a kill for him already in this opening round. Twist is trying to help him out as well with NKL and Dreamer on the rotation. Twist gets himself one and Dreamer is on his own in the CT spawn. The terrorist will already push him. No respect being paid. Might have been dangerous against a guy like Dreamer. But Ancient pushed him together, and with three guys coming his way, Dreamer would have either gone down or ran out of bullets. And you probably don't win a, a gunfight with a knife. So, good round by Ancient, thanks to Schneider's triple kill. They managed to get themselves into the B-bomb set rather easily, and they leave E-Frag at a force buy situation with quite a lot of smoke grenades. Of course, the CTs try to slow down the terrorist approaches with that smoke. But overall, the CTs go for a kind of a default playing style with two players at B and three at A. Twist and company take their time. They don't want to run into any stack or any aggressive play. So they focus on Banana for now with their three players. They would surely get the refrags even if the CTs had a stack over there or if the CTs went for any aggression. And the players over in second mid just secure the space and secure the second half of the map. Twist bouncing in a nade does a minor amount of damage onto Victor. Nothing to worry about really. But the CTs will rotate bubble into the B bomb side as well. And now let's see if the terrorists will actually go into the B bomb side. They rotated one additional player to A, and now they are feeling up both of the bomb sites just trying to make up their minds at the moment twist with a frag onto Victor Spy Leader with a reply and that's a big frag for the CTs they drop a weapon and they could try and pick that up while the teammates on the CT side on the A bomb side get pressured by the terrorists ancient send Paul forward with his Galil he finishes off NKL now Dreamer with the refrag E frag refuse to give up Dreamer with the second frag a 3v2 now Lecro steps in with the UMP a long range fight not really the best weapon Pronex helps him out with the Mac 10 and it went down to a 1v1 and almost no time on the clock as well on ancient Lecro was the hero to step up then with the double kill an ancient Get scared a little bit. Efrag showing what they are made of already in the second round here. This time around, it should be an easy round for the terrorists. The CTs have nothing to work with except for two P250s. One on Spy Leader and one on Bubble. And they choose to go for a stack inside the B-bomb site. While the terrorists go for A. 
And that's, uh, yeah, the 50-50 guessing game. You either win or you lose. It's like roulette. Even though on roulette, the bank always wins in one way or the other. And you can see that Ancient will take their time now. They check everything up. They don't want to run into a stack. Just uh, the same story again. Pronax spots nobody inside the site. And it's safe. The terrorists will relieve themselves. Oh, Pronax really, really tense now. The nerves showing already. He got a little bit scared by Lecro there. But Ancient will plant the bomb, get themselves into comfortable after plant positions. Twist already has bottom of banana secured together with Schneider. And the two may be most talented but still least successful guys in the Swedish scene. Well, if you compare the talent to the amount of tournaments they managed to win, it's, it's uh, been argued in the scene that they are wasting their time. But they wanted to play with with guys they like and with friends and that held them back a little bit. But now they have a really good lineup that they can do some damage with. Obviously Schneider and Twist got the last frags. So we are headed into this weapon round with E-Frag on no offs and just a very limited range of nades. The only one with a defuse kit is Dreamer. Schneider and Twist are working their magic on top of Banana together with Poff who is going to be their support player with a P90. He might not have the impact in the round. They will rather send one of their AKs forward just to get that one click killing ability in there. Ancient leave no question about where they want to go. Nothing going on in apartments or on the A-bomb set and the CTs have a four-man stack in there. Spiley there is completely flashed, but they don't see him. He manages to get one frag and that's maybe the most that he could have done in this situation. But Efrag has to rotate their remaining players in there. Bubble is already in the construction site. A very important part to retake the bomb site from. But the terrorists will push him and they encircle him. There is Pronax picking him off. NK with the refrag, making it a 3v3 again. And the terrorists still have to work together to make this round go their way. Pov with the P90 trying to draw the attention away from his teammate. Lecro and Pov make it work together and Schneider finishes Dreamer who was the last man alive. Ancient with a fourth round on the board making it look so easy in those starting rounds. But Efrag will start to pick up how the terrorists click and how they work and they will figure out how to stop them. I'm not really a fan of their force buy, but I think the Bulgarian squad realizes that their opponents already have four rounds on the board and there is really nothing that Efrag can afford now except for the Famuses. But on the scoreline, they can't afford to lose any more rounds, so that's why they go for the force buy. And it paid off so far. Equal trades, considering the weaponry. It's definitely not bad for Efrag. But of course they are split up into two and one with Spyleader being alone on the B bomb site and his teammates holding the A site. The terrorists will obviously fancy the B site go. They were successful in that already. And now Spyleader catches the Molotov. He goes forward, goes for the aggressive move, gets one frag and that's okay, that's that's okay, yeah. It's not the best that he could have done. But the move was the right one to make. If he had retreated, he would have burned a little bit. And he would have been overwhelmed by the terrorists. So now he gives his teammates a fighting chance in his 2v2. Dreamer and NKL just securing their position for now at the entrance to the B bomb site. While Pov and Schneider working together to clean up the bomb site first. Now they go for the plant behind the fountain. Pov still only has a P90 and well considering that Schneider has the AK Pov will probably go for the decoy play so to speak he will try to divert the attention of the CTs and give Schneider the time to take them down now NKL didn't spot Schneider he fired in the wrong direction on top of that and Schneider will finish the job Dreamer in the meantime picks off Pov and Schneider's on 13 HP Dreamer knows how important this round is and this clutch and he makes it happen Double kill for Dreamer, the bomb will be defused. Or will it? The 10 second defuse is quite long. 
It's gonna be close. But it's gonna be defused in the nick of the time. Dreamer steps in for E-Frag and gets them out of this very precarious situation. The first round on the board for the CTs. It took them long enough, but that famous force buy definitely paid off for the Bulgarian squad. The Swedes on the other side have saved up enough money so they can buy up 5 AKs, no problem for them. On the CT side, however, we still have a Famas and a 5-7 on NKL. Definitely gives Ancient the chance to make the CT safe and the first frag in favor of the Terrace. The second one follows up, Pronex exploding, but NKL and Dreamer will make it a 3v3 again. Somehow the CTs came back from the grave, one burned and one naded. Schneider now finishes Dreamer off. And the CTs on a desperate attempt to keep the A bomb set under control. They lose Spire Leader and Victor is coming in from a long. The terrorists already know where he's positioned at and they flash him off. Now Twist on for the aggressive move. Maybe not really expected by Victor but still handled perfectly. And he could have had a chance to retake this bomb site. Schneider and Pov are quite low on HP but he knows that the, the HP of the terrorists don't matter too much. They got themselves into very good positions already and they will most likely either trade or have him walk into a crossfire. So Victor goes for the save. He tries to give his team a fighting chance in the upcoming round, but it's not going to be easy for E-Frag. That's for sure. Ancient on the other side. They are having some trouble here and there, but overall a five-round scoreline on the terrorist side that early in the game gives them so much space now as I said already at the start of this game the terrorists can try a few different setups now they can afford to lose one or two rounds without without actually losing any control over the game and if they do some damage to the CTs by taking them down making it a 2v1 situation for example they will still have the ability to force them on a save really soon. Engine taking a time now, collecting some map control with four players working on mid and second mid and twist holding banana on his own. Which I really I, I think Ancient have a too easy time here getting themselves into banana. The CTs could do some more they could smoke it off a little more aggressively be in front of the car, so they could smoke it off over here. They could get themselves into the sandbag and the, the cab sit, uh, position. But Efrag pays a lot of respect to Ancient. Let's see how that works out. Pronix goes down already. The terrorists have Schneider checking out Pit, and he catches a lot of damage as well. 16 HP remain, and CT still have 5 players alive. But in the meantime, Twist made his way deep into the B bomb site. He's pulling back a little bit. He's scared for his life. He doesn't want to lose the control over that part of the map. So Ancient still have a chance to make this happen, even though they're down two men. Now Victor has to step up, but he goes down, and Spy Leader does the same. Twist with a double kill. Really important frags for the terrorists. The CT's on the rotation now, but they are all coming in from CT spawn, and that's not really favoring them. They have a long distance to shoot from with a 5.7 and the P250. It's not really the best to work with. Twist will intercept them already on the way to the side, but Dreamer trades him. And that gives NKL the chance to maybe pick up a weapon here. 2v2 still, NKL gets his hands on the AK. The terrorists are working their way through the CT spawn again. Schneider stepping up again. NKL now has to fight against uh, against Twist at first, and he doesn't get the frag. So Ancient will make it look easy again, even though they had some trouble again. In the end, they always handle those three v three situations perfectly, and it was a three v five at first. So big props to the Swedes pulling that round back into their own favor, making it six to one. With 12 frags on Schneider, 8 on Dreamer. Just basic play again by Ancient. They are working their way into the A bomb set. Schneider again with a quick frag into the A bomb set against the saving CTs. It shouldn't be any problem for the terrorists to make this push happen. But as always, they are taking their time. Rather be safe than sorry. 
And if you lose money, it might come back to haunt you in the end of the game. So it's always better to have all your five guys surviving with Schneider being naded down to 11 HP. He goes back and just defends himself for now. Twist gets that frag onto Spidey but loses the majority of his own HP. So the terrorists have to figure out how to keep Schneider and Twist alive. That's not the right way to do that. Pronix got himself into a long already, but there's nothing to be done over there. No CT action while Lecro opens up the B bomb site. The CT is decimated to two players and both of them are on the A bomb site. Pronix can easily intercept them on the way to B. If Dream and Enkel will really go for it. I mean they have a P250 that they could use to get an exit frag. But the armored AK players should have a rather easy time here. NKL gets his hands on the AK and that's a big feat for the CTs. If they get that weapon for free, he already picks up a Molotov as well. Now Dreamer just tries to slow the terrorists down while they hunt down NKL. Ancient must know that NKL has got this, that weapon in his hands. And they're trying to hunt him down together. Chronix will enter the apartments now and NKL doesn't really know where to look at. He hears footsteps all over the place. Now the bomb will blow up. Leko shows up. NKL running into some trouble. He was sprayed from below as well. Pronix was there spraying him. Um, and Lecro obviously from the front. So he was kind of pinned in between the terrorist ancient. Make it 7 to 1. And it looks quite decisive here. Let's check the odds real quick. Oops. EGB.com, of course. One of our partners providing us with the numbers. Famous is for the CTs in the meantime and no hat armor except for Dreamer. But hat armor isn't really mandatory for the CTs. The AKs will kill you anyway. And we have the default play for Ancient again. They don't really need to execute anywhere. It, it worked so perfectly with the default playing style that they just do it all over again and again it worked out on front in front of the B bomb site with Spiley to going down the terrorist will pull back a little bit just because Twist has lost 70 HP and the Swedes are looking for some apartment control so a slight change change now they usually went for middle and B now they have Pronix working in apartments and Efrag have a good setup to counter that NKL is on the balcony and Dreamer is in pit Pronex is already spotted, or at least they know where he's coming from. They know that that smoke was tossed from Carpet Hall. And the terrorists will make their way into a shot together. Bubble already knows what's going to happen. He tries to cover his teammates in pit, but Pronex disposes of NKL. Now Bubble has to step up. He gets a double kill, but has to reload. And now Lacro will push him and just sprays him down before he can do any more. A 3v1, and Victor has to save. What a quick execution by Ancient. Catching the CT slightly off guard. Dreamer wasn't able to do the damage he could have done from Pit. And Spy Leader was disposed of way too quickly by Pronix. The balcony position is quite effective if you get that first frag. Because you can then pull back into apartments if you'd like to do so. Or you can fall back into Pit. And then you have two players in Pit that can set up that crossfire of death. But it didn't work out at all for the CTs. Efrag look a little bit deflated now. 8 to 1 in favor of the terrorist side. With 13 kills on Schneider. 9 on Twist. NKL and Victor both have a really rough time at the moment. So let's see if they can get a few more rounds back. Definitely needed for Efrag to get some more confidence for the second half. Even if they should get themselves a few more rounds here, it's going to be a struggle on the terrorist side. No question about that. And Schneider has the AWP in play. Already ringing off that first frag onto Victor. Twist finishes Spy Leader who tried to get his hands on the weapon that Victor has dropped. And Efrag is down two men left with P250s and a 5.7 for Bubble. No equipment at all for the CTs. The terrorists 
already know we killed two players on B. Maybe they have two more players around. Maybe they went for a stack. So Twist just hangs out over there. Wants to find out if there is more action coming from the CT side. And in the meantime, his teammates work on the A-bomb side. And it seems like Ancient will go for A after all. And that's maybe not the best idea here. NKL and Dream are there. Two quick P250 headshots could turn this into a 3v3. And you never know what's going to happen after that. So let's find out if Ifra can get that last line of defense. That last guy coming in from behind as well. Bubble is making his way into the back and Dreamer will get that first frag onto Schneider. Looking good for the CTs now. Bubble will finish off Leekro. Pronex comes in from the balcony but Dreamer finishes him and Dreamer with another frag making it a 1v3. Twist is on his own with 25 seconds on the clock. He will get rid of Bubble in the bottom of Banana and now he can make the rotation happen. Making it look better for himself. If he gets himself into the side early on and KL is trying to get there and intercept Twist but the smoke is faded already. Twist just barely got himself to the grill. He will plant the bomb in safety. Dreamer and then KL going for the retake now. They don't have any equipment. And Twist is going for that encounter. He knows he has to turn this into a 1v1 as quickly as possible. But they both face him. And he put some pressure on him. 20 HP. Now the first head is popped. But NKL is getting the refrag. And E-frag get themselves back again with that save round. Dreamer with the triple from Pit. That's something that I would have liked to see him do in that one round when Spidey was at the balcony and Dreamer was in here. I would have liked to see Dreamer get two frags at least, which he wasn't able to pull off. This time around, even against the odds, E-Frag, make it happen. But Agents did so much work already. No real problem for them. They still have enough money to buy up in the upcoming round even. So the Swedes have enough time here to make up for that one round. That one small mistake they made. Twist is going to work on top of Banana as always. Going for the pre-fire on the corner to maybe catch Spy Leader. He definitely knows that Spy Leader likes to play that angle. But nobody there yet. Victor looking for the right timing from coils into the card. Twist is there, but Victor doesn't have the timing and he doesn't have the guts to peek either. He doesn't want to make it a 5v4. I mean, in the enemy's favor, of course. By going for a peek that is unnecessary. So Efrag fancying the safe play. And a good nade. Taking Lecro down to 60 HP. Schneider on 43. The CTs giving themselves a good fighting chance here with that initial damage. Ancient will let Twist fake the B bombs and he spots the arm of Victor. Good spray there, taking him down to 30 HP. The CTs panic a little bit, but their A defenders still stay in position. So not that big of panic. Inside Ancient, uh, inside E-Frag, Pronix now heads from the balcony into the truck area and he goes down 4v1. Now thanks to Bubble coming in from a long, gets himself two and Spy Leader with a crossfire making it 3 to 8. Now E-Frag pulling two rounds back into their favor. The terrorists, as I mentioned earlier, have enough money to buy up anyway. Um, Lecro could... Yeah, that's a cool bug. Update, updating the money a little bit too late. I thought he could have dropped the weapon, but the 6k was um, not updated. He only has 1k, so he couldn't have dropped anything for Pov. Ancients still have those 4 AKs, and that's more than enough weaponry to make it work. Going for the straight A play. And I wanted to look up the odds. Let's see. 1.8 in favor of Efrag and 1.8 in favor of Ancients on EGB.com. So it couldn't have been more equal. Let's check CSGO launch as well, just to have a second a second um, opinion. With 46 in favor of Efrag and 54 in favor of Ancient. Let's see if Efrag can come back here. They need every single round there is to be played in this half. And on top of that, they need to win the pistol round on the terrorist side. And on top of that, they need to win eight rounds on the terrorist side just to make it in overtime. 
and we are yet to see this round unfold. The chances are really, really slim for Efrag. Now they're going in. The terrorist with the execution. Victor steps up. Double kill for him. He smoked off, but he already retreated behind the smoke. The terrorist will plant the bomb, but they are quite low on HP with Schneider on 42. 7 for Twist. Now a cheeky boost coming up. Twist only has his head peeking out, so his HP is so to speak, not really of importance anymore. The CTs will work their way in there, but they lose two players. They didn't spot Twist straight away. And Schneider is coming in from the back. Pronix just needs to uh, take the attention away from his teammate, but they have spotted him already. And Victor will defuse the bomb with enough time. Good retake by the CTs, but a lot of damage has been dealt by Ancient. And a very good after-planned uh, cheekiness coming up by them with that boost. Pronix and Twist were there. Schneider came in from behind. Some good play by Ancient with Schneider repeatedly coming in from behind on the B-bomb side. And the CTs got themselves into quite some trouble here. Especially with Twist, who popped up from that box and confused them a little bit. Took Efrag a few seconds to figure out where he was. But the CTs win three rounds in a row. One of them very decisive. This one went down the wire again. So the money is, uh, yeah, not looking too good, but good enough. Good, but not best, so to speak. On the terrorist side, we have a force buy coming up with two Galils. They know that if they lose this round, the loser bonus will stack up. If they get a bomb plant, they will be able to buy up at least in the last round of this half. So Ancient tried to maximize the chances in this round. Lecro and Twist already being taken down to 70 HP by the double nade. Good timing by Efrag. And the terrorists will go back to the B-bomb side, the side they, they were most successful on. Twist is under pressure, has to retreat. His uh, low HP didn't really help him in that situation. Has to give up control of Banana and uh, 27. So he's probably going to pass his AK to Schneider. And Pov now down to 13 thanks to the headshot that um, it must have been Dreamer. He was just spraying that corner still. So the terrorists already low on HP but they haven't really achieved anything in this round so far. Now a Twist goes down trying to enter the B bomb site. The bomb is carried over there by Pronex and the terrorists try to fake a last second A go trying to get the CTs out of position on B and then maybe catching them off guard with that surprise of go. Lecro already being sprayed down by Bubble and Bubble with the second onto Pov. It's a 2v5 already. Spy leader finishes the job on Pronex and the bomb gets dropped inside the spawn alley. And Schneider just jumping in there. He didn't have any bullets left in that in that clip that he picked up. And Bubble will have no real trouble getting that frag. 8 to 5 now in favor of Ancient still, but E frag make it four rounds back to back. Doing some work here. Dreamer and Bubble catching fire. What a bad pun. Sorry for that one. The terrorists finally feel some pressure. They put an AK in the hands of Schneider. But I don't know if that can change the outcome of this round. They probably just want to... Well, doing damage is not going to change the buy situation for the CTs anymore. So they really need to win this round or get the bomb plan at least to give themselves a chance to buy up in the last one. They would have at least two players being able to buy. Electro could have something as well. So let's find out if Schneider is able to get his team the edge with that one AK to kill them all. The smoke is there, the terrorists will run through that smoke. Schneider burning alive, but still gets himself a frag. One of them on his teammate. 12 HP remain after the push. They get the bomb plan, and now it's all up to their positioning. The CTs are quite far away still, so the terrorists can get themselves nice and cozy in the construction site. And they got themselves some weapons as well. Schneider and Twist, the only ones with armor. And now Pov just draw... Oh, he's 
just stepping in the flames, burning alive. Twist with a frag onto NKL. Now Schneider with the crossfire. It's a 2v1. Dreamer knows that they are low on HP. He needs to make it happen for his squad to have a fighting chance in the second half. But the terrorists have perfect positions. They push him together and they trade for each other. Twist with a double in the round. An ancient upset E frag. Making it 9 to 5. The Swedes are back. And the terrorists will have a full buy going into this last round of this half while the CTs have to scrape the bottom of their pockets. We have two Famuses for Dreamer and Spy Leader. They don't have too many nades either. Efrag need to make something happen and they try to take the initiative. They already pushed down into the back of the terrorist. Lekker completely oblivious to his backside. The terrorist under big pressure, but it's still a 4v4. And the CTs had to pull out of middle by pushing through Banana. And that gives the terrorist a small opening. A small time frame was there for the terrorist to push into A. But obviously Ancient just want to secure the area now. They have to get map control back here. They don't know where the CTs are or where they stayed. Twist with an important angle here. Bubble was about to peek that small gap, but Twist didn't see him. Neither did the CT though. And look at that position by NKL. He's in the apartment. Schneider will have to peek him and get the kill. And he does that, making it a 4v3. CTs are reeling a little bit, but Spy Leader tries to take control back. Doesn't do so. Pronix with a frag. Bubble and Victor on their own. Victor is the only one on the A bomb site. Bubble is coming in from behind, but he's going to be covered by Twist with the AWP. Somehow, Twist didn't go for the peak. He rather retreated, making it a 3v1. Bubble has no other choice than to push in there. He hops through the flames, trying to make it look. A uh, little, you know, sometimes a seemingly stupid move is the best one you can pull off. But they smoked him off and now there is Twist finally getting that frag. 10 to 5 in favor of Ancient on the terrorist side. I really don't see E-Frag winning this one. But I would be happy to see an overtime. And an overtime could be possible. If E-Frag win the pistol, they could make it 10 to 8. Winning the first rifle. And as soon as that, they have drawn the game. And with a 10 to 10, maybe we could see Ancient feel some pressure. As I mentioned before, they're still a quite a new squad, so to speak. And they might not have the trust they need on the CT side. Twist already down to 25, but that doesn't hold Schneider off from taking down Spy Leader. Puff got taken out earlier in the bank. This position... CTs with a slight aggressive move here in the pistol round. But Efrag handled it quite well. And now the Bulgarian squad can push and start their usual pistol round. They can start their normal approach. Victor just secures apartments. NKL does the same. And in the meantime, we have Bubble and Dreamer working on Banana. The CTs have three players on the A-bomb side still. And if Victor makes his presence known over there, he might hold them on the A-side a little longer. Maybe long enough to make his teammates push through to the B-side. Pronex is the only one standing there. He's got the defuse kit. And the bomb will be planted on B. There is no question about that. But Pronex has to stay alive now. He's not getting any frags, but at least he avoids being taken down. Now Victor is going to be in a key position on the A-side. He hears the CTs coming from there, and he intercepts the first one. Oh, Twist is so low, he gets finished off by Victor. Finally, the terrorist with the edge. The bomb is ticking, but the CTs have the rotation coming in from Banana and from CT Spawn. Lecro is there first off. He wants to get rid of Victor, and he does that. Good job by Lecro. Even though he's down to 6 HP, at least he got rid of the backstabber. The CTs now have the clutches on the B bomb side, but the terrorist still covering each other and themselves at the same time. Bubble with the frag, and now Dreamer rings one off, and Bubble has no trouble against Schneider. The pissed round in the back, E-Frag, can make their comeback happen against Ancient, who will most likely go for the force buy. And they even have a max 7 for Schneider, who is trying to save up enough money for an orb as soon as possible. And we will see a stack of three players at A, two players at B. 
I somehow expected the CTs to go for a bigger stack on A with four players. One to give Schneider a good chance to get a frag with the Mac 7. Just, you know, just drawing the attention away. But, well, they go for a more or less default playing style. Twist with the CZ75 on long. Schneider and Lecro working on short. And the rest obviously on the B side. Efrag taking the time now. No real map control for them. Might might cause to run them uh, might cause them to run into some trouble later on in the round. If they have to hurry up, they could run into that C Z for example, or the Mac 7. Now Dreamer will make run uh, will make Twist run into a headshot. That's the 5v4 already. The terrorists will wrap around the B bomb site. And the CTs try to plug that hole with Pov sitting in CT spawns. Pov goes to work onto Spy Leader. He can't get his hands on the AK though. Now finally he picks it up and the Terrorist will lose one more player to Bronix in the B bombsite. Victor goes to work onto Pov, pulling it back to a 2v1 though. Lacro on the far rotation from the A side, but a lot of damage has been dealt by the CTs. Bubble and Victor can't afford to make or let this go down to a 1v1. And Lecro obviously wants to save that AK for the next round. That gives the CTs a good fighting chance at the start of this half already. The terrorist money will be good enough to buy up, but losing three players might come back to haunt them later on in this game. And especially with Ancient getting that that sliver of hope already. That is... Uh, in my opinion, that's a bigger problem. If you give your enemy a reason to cheer at this early in the half, while you're trying to make a comeback happen, this could really turn out to be ugly for Efrag. Three AKs, one Mac-10 and a CZ for the terrorists. On the other side, we have that AK being saved by Lecro. Schneider reinvests into a Mac 7. And we have all armor and all nades for Ancient. Lecro even gets boosted up to the roof. Ancient trying to be extra cheeky now with heavy stack on a short. Nobody's covering a long. And the terror is taking the time, making their way up into the apartments. Same time we have Bubble covering Banana, but that's really only covering it, not really pushing it or getting control of it. They just want to avoid having the CTs backstab them while they're executing on the A side. Now let's keep our eyes at Lecro. He's going to be a key player for Ancient. The smoke is in place and the CTs go to work on the first terrorist. They have two frags in the back already. And KL with the reply of his Max 7. Uh, Mac 10, of course. The Mac 7 is yet to show up. They might not know that yet. The terrorist gets slowed down on top of middle. And they waste a lot of time giving the CTs the chance to rotate additional manpower to the A site. And at the same time, we have Pronix pushing a little bit deeper into B Banana to get some more information and some more intel. Smoke is covering him still, and he hears Efrag running past. Now the CZ is ambushing the CTs, uh, the terrorists, of course. Victor with the reply, but 13 seconds on the clock. The terrorists have no time to waste anymore. Good flash coming in, just forcing Victor to retreat a little bit. Now Dreamer is up for grabs. He's already low on HP. Victor has to cover him, but the smoke prevents that from happening. Dreamer still gets a frag, making it a 1v2. Victor now in the back of the bomb site, and he goes down straight away to twist headshot of the 5-7. The bomb is being defused by Pov already, and Ancient will pull the upset thanks to the good work they have done in the second round. Getting the third one on the board, definitely upsetting Efrag here, but the Terrors have enough money to buy up again. And this is going to be another key round for both teams. If Efrag win this one, they will force Ancient to save. Maybe even two times, depending on how many weapons they save. And on the other side, if Ancient win this round, Efrag needs to save, and that would put Ancient on a 13-round scoreline. 
just three rounds away from getting into the winner bracket final of Group C. We will have SK Gaming and Method play later on. So make sure to stay around for some more Go Champions League action brought to you by G2A, EGB.com, Twitch and of course last but not least Steel Series. The CTs will get their first few frags. Schneider going big with a triple kill and he's making it a quad. Ancient have the trusty AK in the hands of Schneider and he's putting it to work. 24 kills for Schneider in only 19 rounds. We have the same amount of, well, not the exactly the same amount of frags, but we have 20 on Twist and 20 on Dreamer. Quite a few carriers at the moment in both squads, I have to say. But Ancient have the stronger carriers at the moment. Victor invested into another AK and Efrag going for the force by. Lecro is spotted already. Victor catches the bait. Lecro handles him. And the CT's up in a 5v2 already. The terrorist will just go down in flames. Another one drops the floor. Schneider with one. And Lecro with two as well as Twist. Ancient will not get into trouble in this force by or anti force by round 13 to 7 in their favor and the terrorists have to save this time around no armor only p250s for the bulgarian squad one deagle and dreamer is quite scary with that weapon maybe he can pull something special off here but i highly doubt that he can win the round with that one weapon spy leader already tagged twist Made him retreat and give up middle control to the terrorists. But the CTs have three players pushing into the bottom of Banana already. Collecting a lot of information about the terrorists' whereabouts. And Efrag certainly has no other chance to make that uh, to make that push from apartments. Twist is in the pit. He's quite low. Might be a possible frag for the terrorists. But the spray is too big. Twist going down after all to Dreamer. But Lecro is still on the side. He's being disposed of by Dreamer with a double kill. He's got Puff to work against. But the CETs have uh, additional firepower already moving in from the B side. And even if Pov would have gone down to Dreamer, the Bulgarian player wouldn't have been able to get his uh, bomb planted on the A side because the CETs were simply too close. And Efrag let quite a few rounds slip after that good start into the second half. Or, well, halfway good start with the pissed round win. After that, they ran into trouble quite early. And Ancient make it a seven round lead, only two rounds away from getting to the winner bracket final. But he's smoked off really deep, and that's what I would have liked to see, or would have liked to see Efrag in the first half. They didn't do it though, and I don't know why they didn't. Maybe they were a little bit too scared. The CTs with that push through the smoke, Pronix goes down and that gives Efrag a really good fighting chance in this round, especially with Bubble picking up the double. And the CTs in a two-man disadvantage. They still have two players on the B bomb site, and that's something that the terrorists will most likely not expect. Spy leader and company make their way to the A side, and that's the right thing to do at the moment. With 45 seconds on the clock, they will most likely not rotate anymore. The CTs have to pull their forces together. Schneider's in CT spawn already, but they want to go for a save, it seems like. Schneider is not really in a position to rotate or do anything. Lecro spots a bomb, he gets a double kill, and now Ancient suddenly is back in the round again. Pov is on the rotation already. If he gets a frag onto NKL, which he doesn't, it would have been even easier. Schneider now has to struggle against two players, but that's definitely possible for him. He showed us what he's capable of achieving already with that quad spray. Spidey and Victor in that crossfire. One inside the side and one in pit. And Spidey went for the peak, which was a little bit risky. But he got them got himself the kill onto Schneider. So he frag win that important round and keep Ancient from getting to the map point and the match point. Because it's a best of one in that $20,000 tournament. We have a best of one double elimination group stage with four groups. We saw Dignitas and Alternator Tags come up and uh, go through 
from group B already. And we will have the group A and group D next week at the 14th and the 15th of March. Spidey, they're going for the sprays through apartments. Doesn't really pick anything up over there. The CTs are way too defensively positioned. Twist looking for some frags here. Th the smoke will fade in a second. That's why he got himself into that position. He needs to be weary of uh, boiler room though. The terrorists are quite close to push him. The incendiary nade held that off. That allowed Twist to go for the peak at the first place. Now he's smoking off banana for his teammates on the B side. An ancient prepare themselves for an upcoming execution. Twist missing that crucial shot. Now he's pushed back into the next position. He's got his teammate ready there and this time around he's not missing it. He's getting a second frag on top of that. Making it a 5v3 looking good for Ancient. And now he's tagging Bubble as well. Twist making himself uh, known throughout the ranks of E-Frag. The scary orb is there. The enemy at the gates. And we have Ancient winning this game. I think I have to get a word with the admins. Changing the map a little bit too early. 16 to 8 in favor of the Swedes. Congratulations to them. We will have another game coming up in a few moments. So make sure to stick around. SK against Method will start in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes. Give them some time to veto and then give them some time to get themselves on the server. My name is Debu. I would really appreciate a follow on the channel. I will give away or I am giving away a Navi jersey and a CSGO guardian pin on my Twitter at the moment so use exclamation mark news to get that information follow me on Twitter and retweet that tweet of course if you want to take part I will draw the winner tomorrow which is also my birthday so make sure to do that I will be back in just a few moments so thank you for tuning in